Hello, everyone, and welcome to the fifth grade virtual parent information night. It's too bad we can't all get together and see one another for parent information night, but thank you so much for watching this video to learn a little bit more about what fifth grade is going to be like for your student this year at St. Joseph School. Let's get started. So a little bit about me. My name is Brooke Enting, Miss Enting. This will be my fourth year of teaching at St. Joe's. I graduated from the College of St. Benedict and hold a teaching license for kindergarten through sixth grade instruction and then sixth through eight language arts instruction as well. I live in Shakopee, Minnesota with my dog, Benny, who you can actually see as my little, you might be able to see as my little loom icon. I'm using loom to record my video. Um, but if you can see my icon, it's of my dog, Benny. I'm beyond excited to have your students in my class this year. I know that this has, is a weird year for them and I'm just so blessed to have each one and each and every one of your students and be able to help them navigate this year and learn so much together. So right off the bat, I wanted to give you um, the link to our class website and then two email addresses I can be reached at. So we do have a fifth grade class site and the link is here. Um, so https colon slash slash sites.google.com slash stjoesapps.org slash enting slash home. And then I can be reached at two email addresses. So they both start with brook.enting. The first one, the at stjosephcommunity.org, that is our um, regular school issued email. And then we, all of us teachers also have um, a Google email. And so that's the at stjoesapps.org email. And so I check both of these daily. I've synced both email accounts. So you can email me at each, either one and I will receive your message. I did want to give you a little um, look at our class site if you have not had a chance to explore it yet. And so this is a place where you and your student can go um, for various um, types of information. So there is a meet your teacher page where your students can read a little bit more about me and some of the things that I really enjoy. There is also a student portal. And so this includes links to things that your students will be using quite a bit. So um, we'll talk a little bit about Google Classroom in this video. I also post weekly plans. And so you can always click on this link to see kind of the topics we'll be learning in each um, subject each week. It doesn't outline the homework, but it will tell you the topics we're discussing. Your students can log into their school Gmail. They can take accelerated reader tests or look at their goal. I also have a copy of their spelling menu on the website. So every week um, for spelling homework, they complete three activities. Um, they can watch recordings that, we're, that I'm doing of our lessons for virtual learners, our class spelling lists, and our daily schedule. So this is kind of a portal just for students. And then there's also a parent portal and so this has a lot of the same links as um, the student portal, but a couple different ones just for parents. So first of all, a link directly to our school website, a link to educate, which is where you can check your students' grades, attendance, and um, view their lunch account. So if you need to put more money in their lunch account, um, you can also check tuition and financial aid information, donate to our classroom. And I also have a link here to our weekly newsletter. So I send the weekly newsletter in an email and I also upload it here. So you can click um, this button to bring you to a list of weekly newsletters. And also for parents, two different things, our school green wave newsletter you can access from our fifth grade website. And you can also order book orders from our school website. So these are just a few um, resources on our web on our fifth grade website that you and your student may find useful as we go throughout our year. Okay, so go back to full screen. There we go. So that's just some contact information and links. All right, so right off the bat, homework, you're probably wondering, okay, how much homework should we be expecting from for our fifth graders this year? First, I wanna talk about types of homework. So 
there is daily homework, and this will typically include any math workbook pages. So if you look over here, this workbook with the whale on it, that is our math workbook. So if you see your student bringing that home, that would be for math. Reading, we read class novels in fifth grade. And so right now we are reading Because of Wind Dixie by Kate DiCamillo. It is such a fabulous book. And so if you ever seen your, see your student bringing home a book and they tell you they're reading it as a class, that's what we usually do in reading. And grammar, slash writing. And so this yellow practice book up here, I refer to this as the English practice book or EPB. If you ever see EPB on your students' um, planners, um, this is a workbook that they bring home for that. Now in fifth grade, we typically will either have grammar or writing in a day. So it's usually one or the other. And the EPB, the yellow practice book here, that has pages for both grammar and writing. So they could use that for either one of the subjects. There is also weekly homework. So our Spanish teacher, Senora Hidalgo, uh, mentioned that she's going to try and give students weekly homework instead of homework every class period. So usually students have Spanish a couple times in a cycle, um, but because of having virtual learners, she's thinking of assigning weekly homework. So I put Spanish under weekly homework. Spelling is also weekly homework. You know, on Mondays as a class, we will write our spelling words into our planners. And then your students have until Friday to complete three activities off of their spelling menus to practice their spelling words and turn those in. And then we take our spelling test on Fridays. And then I also have take home folder as weekly homework because every week um, on Fridays or Thursdays, if it's a short week, um, I will give your students things to put into their take home folder. And then their job is to bring the take home folder home look it over with you or an adult and then that adult signs their parent signature sheet in their folder and they bring that back to school on monday and i check that so that would be weekly homework occasionally students may have projects um, that they are working on in technology and art um, so art it could be like their final piece of work and so they're bringing it home to work on because they didn't have enough class time um, to get it done in class or technology if they're working on a presentation. Uh, so that would be occasional. For music, I know that Mrs. Monsoor sometimes has quizzes and so students may get study guides and so they would occasionally have some music homework. And then because I didn't want you questioning, well, doesn't religion and social studies have homework? They usually do not. I approach religion and social studies as very discussion based. You know, the types of discussions that we have in religion based off of what we read in our book together. It's so fascinating and awesome that we are able to have those discussions in school. And so basically your students are earning discussion points or participating let me say participation points. So as long as they are engaged and, you know, um, alert during those classes, they are earning full points. Same with social studies. Um, we, we'll, we will be talking a lot about um, colonization and the American Revolution in fifth grade. And so we get to talk about a lot of different things and it's super cool. And so again, religion and social studies are discussion based. So they won't necessarily always have homework, but your students will receive participation points for those classes. The amount of homework that your students um, should receive. Now, typically students get at least, I'd say, or, or around 30 to 60 minutes total of work time every day in school. So that work time could be, you know, 10 minutes at the end of math class where they have an opportunity to get started on their math homework. That could be 20 minutes of dedicated study hall time at the end of the day where they're working on homework. And that could also include, you know, if our early busters have left and it's still 15 minutes until the car line numbers start being called, that is also work time for homework. So your students have a lot of opportunities in fifth grade to be getting started on their homework and asking me questions throughout the day. So if after you know the first two weeks of school you're noticing your students are saying they got all their homework done um, and you're kind of questioning that they very well could have and i've told students that um, they should be using that work time but if i notice that they're rushing to get homework done or their work is sloppy and lots of incorrect answers 
I will have them redo it if that becomes a pattern. So I am also, I also always keep an eye on that, but I do want you to know that they receive ample work time each day. So I would not expect them to have more than 30 to 60 minutes of homework each day, depending on how wisely they use their work time in school. Okay, so then um, we just talked about the types of homework and the amount of homework. I would do want to give you information about missing assignments and late work. So first of all, to check your students' assignments and grades, you can visit Educate. So if you remember when I was showing you our fifth grade class site, there was a link for parents on the parent portal for you to be able to visit Educate. And so this is where you can log in and view all of your students' if you have more than one student at St. Joe's, their assignments and their grades. Um, so I have the, the URL right here in a teal color as well. If you are having trouble logging into Educate or you do not know your login information for Educate, I would encourage you to contact our superhero slash secretary, Chris Meaden. So her email is Chris, C-R-I-S dot Meaden, M-E-A-D-E-N at stjosephcommunity.org and let her know that you don't know your login information and she can help you out with that. Um, for missing and late work, a missing assignment is an assignment that has not been turned in. So if I come around and check math work and your student does not have their assignment done, it would be marked as missing in the grade book. And so when I say in the grade book, that means in educate online. A late assignment is an assignment that has been turned in late. So if on Monday I, were, I checked your students' math homework, I'll use that as an example again, and they didn't have it done, it would be marked as missing in Educate. But then if they come and show it to me on Tuesday, you know, I see they took their time, they got it all done, then I would go back into the gray book, back into Educate, and I would change it from a missing assignment to a late assignment. Um, and they would receive partial credit for late assignments. So usually um, daily homework, that would be like your math, math workbook pages, English workbook pages, those kinds of things. They are typically worth two points in the grade book in Educate. Um, if an assignment is missing, it will have a zero. But again, once your student turns that missing assignment into me and I see it, it will no longer have that zero and it will no longer be marked as missing. It would then be marked as late and they would receive partial credit. Um, so that's an incentive, you know, just because, you know, things happen, life happens. If your student forgets to do an assignment, it's not like they missed their chance to receive any points on an assignment. In fifth grade, they get partial credit. Usually if an assignment is worth two points and a student ends up turning it in late, they would receive 1.5 points, which I believe is either a 70 or 75% for that specific assignment. So they are receiving a good amount of points when they turn it in. So if your student ever tells you or you ever see that your student has a missing assignment, really encourage them to get that done because they do receive points. Um, one note before we move on to the next slide. Um, I absolutely love teaching fifth grade because um, you know, I am preparing students for middle school. And with that comes the shifting of responsibilities throughout the year. And so in fifth grade, the responsibility for homework does start to shift a little bit more onto the students. I do, I will send home lists of missing assignments. Occasionally, if students have missing assignments, I will send emails to parents, but a lot of it is on the students, you know, to be keeping track as well. And so that's why I always encourage families and parents to be checking Educate because I want students to start to feel that responsibility, but I also want families to be helping them by looking at Educate and kind of, you know, keeping track of it as well. So, you know, it's a team effort. I'm giving them some more responsibility and I ask that you also help them by looking into their assignments and grades as well periodically on educate to make sure you know they don't need help managing their their homework load or anything like that because so i i love working as a team with parents when it comes to assignments and work okay 
So we just talked about homework. There are also two things that at St. Joe's I consider to be trimester duties because they are things that students are working on um, all trimester long for each trimester. So the first thing is called a service project. And I really love service projects because it's encouraging students to go out into their community and perform a service that betters their community. So a service project, um, students must complete one service project each trimester. So that's a total of three in a school year. Each service project should be one hour long. And so students and I talked a little bit about this last week and we went into detail, you know, about how if you have two projects and they're both 30 minutes, you could put both of those onto one service project form and just reflect on both of those. So it, it doesn't have to be one project that's an hour long. It could be two projects that are each 30 minutes long, but it should total up to be at least one hour. Now, because we are living in, during COVID, um, we brainstormed a lot of different ideas as a class of things you can do um, without, you know, exposing yourself while social distancing, while being respectful of that. And so the students came up with a lot of ideas. So I encourage you to talk to your student about what their ideas are for their service projects this year. And if they're having a really hard time coming up with ideas, I would encourage you to reach out to me or other parents in the class who maybe have been here before and they have come up with some really cool project ideas with their students. So we are a community. If your student is really having a hard time thinking of a service project to do that doesn't involve them going out into like a large crowd of people during COVID, always feel like you can reach out to me and I can also provide you a list with a list of ideas as well. So every trimester, a service project will be due. Um, oh, and over here is an example of the front side of the form. So the front side of the form is more just information about the project. The back side of the form has three questions that students should be answering in complete sentences. Basically, you know, asking, how do you think the people you served felt about your service? How did serving your community make you feel? And would you do this project again? Why or why not? So it's more of a reflection on the service they provided their community. The second duty that students have every trimester is their accelerated reader or AR goals. And so what accelerated reader is, is it is a program where students will read a book and then they will take a quiz on the book. And it's just, general comprehension information um, where if a student actually read a book, they should be able to answer every question. Um, and so they read the book, take the quiz, and then um, the amount of questions they got right on the quiz will earn them a certain amount of points. And so students receive a point-based goal each trimester. So your student will be receiving a light purple, um, except an AR goal sheet that's light purple, and it will have their goal on it. So it could be 15 points, it could be 10 points. And so that's the amount of points they should be earning by the end of the trimester. And this year, the end of the trimester, I believe is on December, I wanna say December 3rd. I think December 3rd is the end of trimester one for this year. So they have all the way until December 3rd. Um, our in-class novels do count towards AR goals. So we are reading because of Winn-Dixie right now. As a class, you know, each student will be able to take a quiz on because of Winn-Dixie and those points will go towards their AR goal. So that's really cool. Um, what I really like about the AR goals is, it, first of all, it's encouraging students to read, but then it also encourages them to challenge themselves because while I choose students as AR goals for first trimester, they choose their goals second and third trimester. And we talk about, you know, uh, you know, healthy challenges for ourselves, not overdoing it, um, but it really is fun to see them challenge themselves. Uh, most books are AR books. Most chapter books are accelerated reader books, but if you are ever, you or your student are ever questioning, you know, is this book that I'm reading in the accelerated reader program? There's this great website called 
arbookfind.com and I have the link in teal at the bottom. Um, and if you visit arbookfind.com, you can enter in the title of the book and the author and it will tell you um, if it's an AR book, the level of the book, and then how many points your student could earn from that book. So very cool. All right, next we have our honor system. So at St. Joe's, we're very proud of our honor system. It helps our students to grow as individuals. And so we have, um, we're gonna talk about, you know, positive and negative consequences as concerned concerning our honor system. So first of all, when students follow our honor pledge, so showing humility, obedience, neighborliness, an opportunity to show their faith and respect, they can earn an honor slip. And so what an honor slip is, it's a kind of a two-part slip. And on one side is a student slip, which I've pictured up here. And then there's also a teacher slip. So when they receive an honor slip, any teacher, and any school staff member can give them an honor slip. And when they receive it, they'll kind of cut it down the middle. They keep the student one. The teacher one, they actually turn into the office. And so Mrs. Roach, our principal, will do drawings with those teacher slips and students can earn school prizes that way. But also with that student honor slip that your student that your student holds on to, they can accumulate them throughout the year and then turn them into me for prizes. So there's individual prizes and then there are class prizes where, where if um, a bunch of students in the class pool their honor slips together, they can earn, um, you know, outside time, they could earn a movie day, that kind of stuff. So it's a really fun way to reward them for following our honor pledge. And like I said, it's across all classes and teachers. They can earn it in any class with any teacher. We all have honor slips to give out. Now on the flip side, if students are disregarding our honor pledge, they could, it could result in them receiving what is what we call a check. And so if you look over here, I have a key here, and these are um, various situations where students could earn a check. Usually I would say, if a student's earning a check for something, the teacher has already given multiple reminders and the student is just continuing the behavior. So um, attention problems, you know, if a student is asked, hey, you know, attention back up here multiple times in a class and they're just still really struggling, that could earn them a check. Um, blurting out in class, the chair, thing I I've never had to give a check for but um you know playing with your chair rocking on your chair leaving it out for people to trip over um, being disrespectful having gum or candy without having a gum pass which is something a student could earn with honor slips but just having gum and candy we don't allow um the homework here so if you look there's an a red h for homework I would say that that check is usually more widely used in middle school. In middle school, they really crack down on homework. So if your student in middle school doesn't have um, an assignment on time, they could receive a check. I would say elementary because they're still really learning and learning that responsibility. We usually do not give out checks for homework. Um, inappropriate language, that's an immediate check. Um, not being neighborly, so not treating our peers with respect, that could result in a check. Not being prepared with materials, um, that could also result in a check. You know, as a teacher, um, if you have everything listed on the board in the morning and then a student forgets half of those things and they had 10 minutes to grab it, that could result in a check. And then also running in the hallway. Now, if a the check system is also across all classes and teachers, so they could earn a check um, in music class or in the lunchroom. Um, if a student were to receive three checks in one day, I would email a note home. I'd let you know what the checks were for and what classes they were in, just so that you know you can be continuing the conversation at home with your student about you know why we don't do these things and what we can do better next time. So I just wanted to make sure I outlined that for you, especially for our many new families so that you understand how our honor system works, both, both the positive consequences and the negative consequences. All right, 
Um, finally, we have Google Classroom. So um, my fingers are crossed. We do not have to go to virtual learning, but um, if we do, it will be Google Classroom for fifth grade. And even though we're not currently in virtual learning as an entire class or an entire school, I do utilize Google Classroom for um, assignments and projects periodically. So first of all, for your student to access Google Classroom from home, they would go to google.com and sign in. And so here's a picture of what that sign in would most likely look like. Your student, where it says email, they would type in their at stjoesapps.org email address and then their password. Every student should have this information taped into their planner. So if they're at home and they don't remember, tell them to look in their planner. It should be right there. Once they've logged into google.com, then they can click on the Google Apps icon, which um, is like nine dots and three rows, and they can select the Google Classroom icon, which I have down here. It looks kind of like a whiteboard or, or a chalkboard, and that will get them right to Google Classroom. So that's how they can access it from home. And we will use Google Classroom throughout the year for homework. So for example, for because of Winn-Dixie, students have um, a little Google form that they fill out every day after we've read our chapters in class. And so we'll read chapters in class together, they'll go home and they'll complete that Google form. And it's just a few comprehension questions and maybe a vocabulary word or two, um, just to extend the learning and the comprehension beyond our reading and our discussion in class. And sometimes I'll have students complete a math exit ticket where they're just practicing like two or three math problems at home on a Google form. So they fill out the Google form and they submit it and I get it right away. So once in a while um, they will have homework in Google Classroom and sometimes they will have projects such as, you know, papers and writing or written assignments that we're typing out or if they're creating a slideshow for a project, all those types of things. So Google Classroom is something that we utilize quite a bit. And if you ever have questions about Google Classroom or are having trouble accessing it from home, always feel like you can reach out to me with your questions. So that is the end of my information for you on this virtual parent information night. Thank you so much. Um, I have just felt the teamwork and the camaraderie a lot this year with you. I'm so looking forward to be working as a team for your students' education, no matter what the school year brings. And I just want to really thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen to this video. Again, here is the website for our class, our fifth grade class site. It has lots of information, lots of links, and I highly recommend you check it out with your student. And then also here are my two email addresses. Always feel free to reach out to me with any questions, comments, or concerns you ever have. And I look forward to a, an exceptionally successful year with you and your fifth grade student. Thank you so much.